welcome to Strelkomania. In this video, I wanted to share a simple Python script that can help you with your tensile strength data analysis. The script is able to read every CSV file within a folder that has tensile test data and give you the Young's modulus or elastic modulus value, the yield stress value given different offset methods. So in a previous video, I had a discussion about brittle materials. This script does a 0.2% offset, the typical one for finding yield stress using Young's modulus, but has two alternatives, including 0.1% and 0.0% offset that you can use as a relative measure, as well as some code for finding the proportional limit based on the ASTM E111 standard. The code also does compute fracture stress and strain at break, which are typically the last values in your tensile data off of a test. It's able to then generate and save plots for each CSV file and export a summary table in Excel. I use this to save myself plenty of time for an upcoming paper where I had 121 tests and I wasn't trying to spend 10 minutes in Excel finding all these values manually per test. If you prefer to work in different units for stress, such as kilonewtons per millimeter squared, which is the same as GPA, or MPA, megapascals, two things you need to do. Make sure that your input CSV files are in the proper units, and then in the code itself, you can change the label for stress to match your appropriate units. I will show you where to do that. When it comes to running your code, you can choose any IDE. Personally, I use Visual Studio Code. Just make sure that you have Python downloaded on your PC. And if you're also using VSC, then make sure you have the Python extension downloaded on the IDE so that the correct interpreter is being used when you run the code. To download Python onto your system, you can either navigate to the Python org site and download the executable directly from their site or if you are a windows user you can head to the microsoft store search in python and then download the latest version now to install these dependencies you can use the pip install line up here in the top comment section right under the dependencies subtitle keep in mind pip install only works if you already have python installed on your computer two ways you can do this installation you can either open the powershell command line directly through your ide Visual Studio Code, I hit Control and the tilde button, and then I can just copy it and then hit enter to execute. I already have these installed, that's why it says requirement already satisfied. You can also open the command prompt directly through your system and then paste the same dependencies installing line here. Again, I already have this installed, that's why it says requirements already satisfied. This code opens a folder and reads CSV files saved within it. So it's important that for every single test that you wanna generate a plot for and extract key mechanical data that it's saved within that folder. Here I have my 121 tests I'm using for a paper. If I open up the CSV files, it's just two columns along with column titles, strain, and then stress. My strain is in percent and my stress is in GPA. Like I previously mentioned, if you want to use other units, make sure that your numbers reflect your unit changes and then change the tags within the code so that your plots have the right axis titles. Now let's see what happens when you run this code. I will hit run python file right at the top of my screen and we'll see the terminal open and give us updates on what's going on processing through each of the CSV files saved in my folder. And then it also lets you know when all the results are exported to the summary Excel file and when the code is done executing. So let's see what we get once this runs. Back in the folder where we have all of our input CSV files, we can see a new folder has appeared called plots. You can change the name of this in the code if you'd like to. When you open this folder, we have the stress strain curves plotted for every single one of the tests. 
Opening one up, we can see that we have the strain and stress data plotted in this blue line. We also have the proportional limit line and elastic fit, as well as the Young's modulus value here. This blue dot is our proportional limit. This red dot is our 0.2% offset. So the way that the code works is that it starts using the 0.2% offset line as a method to find yield stress if the stress strain curve is quite brittle or does not have enough data where the 0.2% offset will cross it. It will choose an alternative offset as indicated by the user. So like I mentioned, 0.1%. If it doesn't cross still, it'll move to the 0.05% offset. If it still doesn't cross, it will not report a value, but for the most part, when you have a super extremely brittle tensile curve where none of the alternative offset measures work, there's two things you can do. Use the proportional limit value that you're able to find or report fracture stress as the yield stress value. This orangish yellow dot is our ultimate tensile stress, and this pink dot is the fracture stress. Again, we can note the axis titles, strain and percent is on the x-axis, and stress, in this case, gigapascals is on the y-axis, and the titles of your graph is just the title of the CSV file, so you can keep that in mind when you're labeling each of your input files. Of course, there is a nice legend here that helps us keep track of what all the different colors and line types mean on this graph. Back in our main folder, there's also a new export saved in here once the code has run. That is an Excel file called tensile underscore results. Of course, in the code, you can change the name of this. This Excel file is what I call our summary sheet. It has exported the values of every single thing we've computed for each one of the CSV files in our main folder. For viewing purposes, I like to select all of the column titles and under format hit auto fit column width. Now we can see that saved is a list of our file names, the Young's modulus or elastic modulus. We have yield stress, then the strain at yield stress, what method was used to determine this yield stress. We also have the proportional limit stress and strain, the ultimate tensile stress or ultimate stress, and the strain at that stress, in case you're curious. Of course, we have fracture stress strain at break, and then I have also added yield strain fraction, proportional limit fraction, etc. The strains are in fractions here because I wanted both in my analysis, but in my case my CSV file had strain in percent, so it's plotted and reported in percent as well. Keep your units in mind. Now for the curious people, you might notice in my sample summary sheet here, some of my tests don't have results for this yield stress and strain value. This is because none of my alternative offset methods ended up crossing the stress strain curve and the proportional limit method was not successful. So in my report, I would include the fracture stress as the yield stress. When you download and open this Python file, you will see a summary at the top including the pip install line you need for the dependencies that the code uses. I have made a section that includes all of the user settings that you can modify. The key one is your input input folder path. So this is something you can get from your file explorer. Open the folder that you're saving all of your input CSV files in and then if you hit the search bar at the top you get the path of this folder. You can directly copy this and paste it into the script based on wherever you've saved your files. This is the name of the subfolder where all the plots are saved once the code has run. This indicates the output of my input file pattern and this is a flag I use for whether or not my strain column in my CSV file is in percent or as a fraction. This is the label for my units on the plot for stress. Keep in mind that your input CSV file needs to have the stress value in your proper units and you should change this label based on the units you're doing. There are other settings in here that you can go ahead and change based on the results you want from the script, notably for proportional limit settings. Here you can change the relative relative deviation threshold and the number of consecutive points that must exceed the threshold before it can be considered as the proportional limit. It also does ignore very small strains below the fraction to reduce the impact of noise that might be present in our data. You can indicate 
your yield offsets to try. So as I mentioned, I have 0.2%, 0.1%, 0.0% offset. But if you want to try any other alternatives for determining yield stress, you can change those values here. If you'd like to see the plots one by one as each CSV file is being processed, feel free to change this flag to true. And then this control is basically to regulate how long these lines get plotted beyond the data. So in this case, my elastic line is being extended by a factor of two of the strain. Some export controls. I export the summary data sheet like we just explored as an Excel sheet with this file name and it exports in the same folder as your input path and this is just in case that doesn't work you can export as a CSV file. The rest of the code is basically custom functions that allow us to extract your mechanical properties, apply proportional limit, find yield stress through varying offsets, and then plot our data and export it in a summary file. There are comments all throughout the code for your own learning and then to explore what needs changing. For example, in your plot, if you don't want all of these lines present within the code, you can go ahead and comment out the plotting of certain things. Another thing to note is that if you are working in other units, you should also go ahead and change these flags down here to reflect that unit. Otherwise, they will appear in your summary Excel sheet up here and if you're not comfortable in changing it in the code once it's been run you can change these directly in excel you may be wondering how the script computes elastic modulus so it uses a straight line fit or what we call linear regression on a small user-defined strain window which you can vary using this user input elastic fit range currently i have it set between a 0.0 5% and 0.2% strain fraction. So the code basically fits a straight line to the stress strain curve between 0.05% and 0.2% offset, and then it uses that slope as the elastic modulus. You may also be wondering how well this fits to standards. So for example, this script does assume linearity between these 2% strain values. If you want to properly follow the ASTM standard for testing plastics, you can go ahead and modify this strain window to go to 0.25%. And of course, it's important to keep in mind that different ASTM standards, depending on the material and test type you're using, even though the script is only for tensile samples, use slightly different methods in your tensile data. There is another ASTM standard, E111, and this requires it to be taken as the slope of a best fit line through the initial region, but that region must also be determined from the data, so not a hard-coded window like this. You are supposed to identify where the stress strain curve is straight, and that's often through a statistical correlation, like checking your R-squared value and how close that is to 1. So if you're looking to do a hard-coded range, this Python file that I've included in the shared link below is for just that. But if you're looking for an auto-linear best fit that moves with your data and gives a more accurate result by sliding a window along the stress strain curve and choosing the linear section that has the highest R squared value, then you can use this Python file that is in the shared link. There are a few more user settings that you can modify under this comment. There are comments for all of these to help you understand, but for the most part to define the window in which the code is looking through the stress strain curve for the linear region, you can use two methods, either a window defined by a number of points or a window that's fixed to a certain strain amount of your test. You should not be using both at the same time, so either type in one and make sure the other one says none. This is one up for debate based on whatever you consider to be a good R squared value. I usually drop this to 0.97. I'm going to go ahead and run this on my input CSV files and show you what the results look like. Once again, this script gives us a plot folder and also a tensile results Excel sheet. Let's take a look at these plots. There are two main differences in this 
plot. The legend also now includes the r squared value to show how close the window is to a linear fit. And then we also have the highlighted window here. Compared to our previous method, we can see that this elastic modulus value is slightly lower. Here is the previous graph in comparison. We can see that using the simple linear interpolation method, our Young's modulus gets estimated as slightly higher. Even though the difference is not too great, it truly depends on the accuracy you're looking for and if, and if you need to be directly following a standard. So just quickly tossing this into my calculator. The difference in these two values is quite small is 0.015. If you're using this data as more for comparison, quantifying different build orientations, for example, of 3D printed parts, how much stronger or more or less brittle ductile a part is printed flat on the build plate or at 90 degrees in comparison to random other angles, this would be good enough, the solely interpolation method. But the one that uses a moving window and then looks at the r squared value of that moving widow would be better perhaps for data in a paper or a large database. And checking out the summary excel sheet, we can now see that next to our elastic or Young's modulus, there is also the found r squared value. If it passes the limit that we set, which I had changed to 0.97, where that window starts and ends in terms of strain and the rest of the same parameters I mentioned for the other script. One thing to keep in mind if you're running this script over and over again is that if you're using the same folder path, the plots folder as well as the tensile results excel sheet will keep getting overwritten. Will keep getting overwritten. So make sure if you don't want that to happen that you're saving the plots and result excel sheet in another place or you're making sure to update your input folder path in case you have input CSV data saved in other locations. Okay, that wraps up this video. A sample CSV file, as well as the two Python scripts I mentioned in this video, are included for your use in the shared link in the description down below. I hope this video serves a purpose to the niche group of people that are conducting plenty of tensile tests. Keep in mind that this code is not perfect and probably could be done in a better way. If you notice issues with this code or have ideas or suggestions for improvements, feel free to leave them in the comments down below or you can contact me via the email that's linked to my YouTube channel page. Alright, I will catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.